These here are Chinese green onion pancakes and you're gonna fall in love with them. Let's get into it. Ingredient set is very nice and small, which means it's gonna be really nice and tasty. Sometimes simpler is better. You wanna first start making your dough. So you wanna add some hot water in your flour and you can use a pair of chopsticks to help get the dough together so that you don't get your hands too dirty. You may have to use your hands to form it into a loose ball. You don't have to knead it too much, just make sure that there's no dried flour, and then wrap it up and let it rest for about 15 minutes. Now after 15 minutes, brush your countertop or your work surface with some oil. I'm here using vegetable oil, and then coat the dough with some of that oil as well. Then start kneading it until you get a nice, smooth, and soft dough ball, just like this. You can let that rest for about a minute, five minutes, and then roll that out into a large rectangle. And we're doing this so that we can make the spirals because the spirals layered with the oil, when we roll it up, and we portion it out, one, it's a shortcut to make several smaller portions of the spiralized dough balls that then will be rolled out to make these pancakes. But honestly, it's very similar to making North Indian lacha paratha. But anyways, it's the oil that you put in the middle, along with whatever topping, whatever stuffing, that helps those layers to be separate and unique and not just meld together into one cohesive dough. Those layers make the spread what they are. Crispy, flaky, and very, very soft. I'm here using sesame oil, but you can use other types of oils. Then sprinkle on some Chinese five spice, try to keep it even, and then do the same with some finely chopped green onions or scallions. Then gently start to roll the dough. You don't have to make it too tight. A loose spiral is perfectly fine. And place the rolled dough seam side down. And then you can cut this into four to six equal sized portions. Go cross sectional. Depending on how big or how many portions you make, it decides how big or large these breads would be. Look at the spirals in there. That's the key. That's the magic behind this bread. Now you wanna start gently patting it down so you can get ready to start rolling it out into a thin disc. It should be relatively easy to roll. Gently roll it out into a disc and then in a hot pan, add the rolled out portions. Now here's where you have to kind of maintain the heat level on that pan. Some oil on the pan and then the rolled out disc. And once one side is slightly golden brown, then flip it and then start cooking the other side. I have to cook the other side a bit more because the pan was not evenly heated. I guess that's what I get for having a super large cast iron where the stove is just not big enough. It's okay, we'll fix that no problem. But I'm also gonna show you really soon what you can expect if the pan is too hot because the texture changes, you won't get the golden brown color and it just won't be as fluffy and crispy as you would oh, yeah. want it. And also make sure while cooking these pancakes, you have the lid on to help cook the inside while we get the outside crispy. These portions are perfect. Nicely golden brown, to my liking. But now let me show you what's gonna happen if you have pan too hot and you don't maintain the heat. See what happens is it doesn't get as golden brown, but it gets more black spots. And while you can still find it tasty, it is gonna affect the look and the flakiness level. So you want a gentle medium heat rather than a high smoking heat which is what you can see here when I lowered the heat, made another pancake, and it's back to being nice 
light and golden brown. A Chinese name for this dish is Song Yo Yo Bing. It makes you wonder about the origins of the dish because from what I've read, it is centuries old and some people believe it's from the Song Dynasty. Maybe that's why the name has Song in it. But it also makes me wonder, how is it that this Song Yo Yo Bing pancake is so similar to North Indian Lacha Paratha? Maybe there was some cross-cultural intermingling of recipes that happened. But it's just, it's just cool. I'm not sure what other cultures have dishes that are the exact same with a whole different name. Do you know if any breads that are spiralized with oil in the middle with different stuffings that have a different name from different cuisines? Well, let me know of that down below. And uh, I'm going to go enjoy this and I'll see you all on the next one.